Hi guys, thank you so much for staying connected. Welcome back to another online experience. We are Elevate Church here in Perth. Especially if it's your first time, I am so glad that you found us. Welcome, we have been expecting you. Today we are going to continue on our new series, If Money Talked. I can't wait to hear, to learn, and to understand what money is in a spiritual and Christian way. However, I remind you to subscribe, like and share, and also to download the Elevate Church Path app so that you can access the notes and all the resources that are available for this series. And now we've come to the session of worship and today we are going to be led by our friends from today's community church and gateway church here in Melbourne.
all I did was worship And all I did was praise All I did was bow down I'm just gonna stay Thank you, worship team, for leading us today. And together, we are going to welcome our speaker today, the one and only, my favorite person, Pastor Mark. Uh huh. Uh huh. And then what he said? Oh man, that is wild. That takes the cake right there. Mom, mom, I gotta go. This is money. What's your emergency? A fraud alert. Okay. Uh, where was the money spent? Albuquerque. Yeah, no, that's your sister's wedding gift that you got her. Crisis averted. It never gets old in the land of money. Good morning. I'm money. Good morning. You've reached money. Hello, this is money. Oh, no, I'm not all money. I'm just your money. No, I'm not God. I mean, some people think that I'm God. <laughs> kind of awkward. <laughs> Hi, Karen. Karen, what's wrong? No, that's not the IRS, Karen. Do not give them any information. Nope. You're not going to jail, Karen. Don't give your social to anyone over the phone, okay? Unless it's me, JK, I already know what it is. Hey, Betsy, this is Bunny calling. Yeah, uh, yeah, well, I just figured I'd call and check in. It's been 362 days uh, since I heard from you. I realized that things got complicated during tax season, but I just wanna make sure that we're still on good terms. Hello, yes, I'm calling for Jim. This is Money. Jim, I know that's you, you just said this is Jim, and then you said it's, Jim's not here. Hello? Hey, Karen, how many different streaming content services do you subscribe to? No, that's great. I'm not saying you should feel guilty. I know that cable is very expensive, but if you subscribe to every single streaming service, it will actually be more expensive because you're buying all of the content that exists. Karen? Hey, Becca, listen, we're gonna have to cut back a little bit. There's only so much self-care that we can afford. Nails, yoga, spa treatments, gym membership, hot air balloons, exfoliation uh, via avocado toast, cricket. Do we need cricket season tickets, Becca? I don't know if we do. Balance check? You betcha. <laughs> I'm your money. I've never seen that. Do you really not know how much you have in there? Okay, okay, we're doing a game. You tell me how much you think you have, okay? Yes, go ahead. Higher. Higher. Nope. You've got to take it higher. Yes, that's correct. Ding, 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 ding. No, this is a great problem to have, okay? Because now that you know, there are places we can go. What? I am writing that down. Whoa, the adrenaline. It never gets old. Never gets old. I'm alive. Hey, shout out to our Elevate online family. Great to have you with us again. And uh, this is uh, the second week of a series that we've called If Money Talked. And uh, <clears throat> I started last week uh, by acknowledging that I'm aware that talking about money makes some people nervous. And uh, I grew up in a family where we weren't allowed to talk about money. So I understand how that might play out for you. And my friendly invitation then, and I can, continue to extend that invitation today is to, if that's you, just to put on your big boy pants and your big girl pants and uh, come on this journey with us because this topic of money and how to handle money and manage money in a way that uh, honors God and, and, and the principles and patterns that he's laid out for us is so vitally important and uh, too important to avoid the subject, that's for sure. And so instead of asking uh, what we should do with our money, we're actually just flipping the script and asking the question, what would our money say to us if we understood that it was actually for us? And the great thing is that what our money might say to us is essentially what Jesus did say to us when he taught about money and stuff because Jesus is for us. And really the biggest idea is that God's the owner of our money and our stuff, and we're the managers, that God entrusts uh, money and stuff to us, but we're not the owners. And, and look, as a concept, 
I'm aware that might come across as a little bit of a head scratcher because, you know, naturally enough, we use expressions like my salary, um, our bank account, and uh, you know, those words play to stuff being ours. Uh, and now it's certainly ours in comparison to it being our friends or our, our neighbors or our cousins. You know, it is our bank account or our wage or our salary, but ultimately, we're not owners. Ultimately, what we have, the financial resources we have in our world, uh, God owns them and he's asked us to manage them. Having said that, money is a very prolific subject. It's something that pervades so much of, of our life and our, and our world. And if we're not careful, we can kind of, kind of start to make it the focus of our world, start to make it like the, 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 the end game of our world. And I said last week, and I'll say it again, money can add meaning to your life, but it's not the meaning of life. So last week, we talked about how you and I can take a percentage of what God's entrusted to us and actually use it to invest in other people and ultimately build God's kingdom and ultimately invest in eternity. How we can turn stuff into stories. And if you missed that, uh, let me encourage you with the strongest encouragement. Go back and watch that. Um, there's a message only video here on our YouTube channel uh, because this three week series, is, it, it really does build on uh, week on week through the, the, the pattern of what God and how God uh, teaches us to handle money and stuff. So missing one week, you kind of, you're missing really a key building block. So last week was about how we send it. Today, I want to focus on how we spend it. And uh, look, here's, here's the trajectory of how some of us, maybe many of us, uh, would hope our financial trajectory would go over our lifetime. That as the, our earning years continue, 5, 15, 25, 30, as our earning years continue, that our earning capacity would increase. And that as our earning capacity increases, that, that we would uh, be able to maintain or, 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 or have a trajectory of expenses that creates a gap. And that gap uh, should ultimately, therefore, translate into savings and investments. But I wonder if for some of you that's not been the case. I wonder if for some of you that as your earnings capacity has gone up over time, that perhaps your expenditure has kind of matched that dollar for dollar, like conjoined twins, if you like, and your graph looks more like this. And, and yet, you know, if that's you, I, I wonder if, if you told yourself back five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, you know, like, hey, when I get that promotion uh, or when I get that pay rise, when, when, I, when I get that new job, or when I start that new business, uh, I really hope that my earnings capacity will increase. And I am absolutely going to start saving and investing. And maybe some of you did, uh, but statistics suggest that maybe some of you didn't. That some of you, your spending habits followed you <laughs> as you rose up the pay scale. And you have not created any margin and therefore have not produced uh, or been left with any savings because spending is kind of like a compulsory sport in our society. I mean, think about this. There was a day, you know, when uh, shopping malls or shopping centers were popular, uh, you know, pre-online shopping and, you know, even pre-COVID, uh, if you like. And maybe you once or maybe you think about a time where you went to the shopping mall and you bumped into a friend and they said to you, oh, what, what are you here what are you here to buy? And you said to them, look, I have absolutely no idea, but I'll know it when I see it. <laughs> and, and you just kind of mindlessly and aimlessly wandered. And then you walked away from the shopping center with a couple of bags full of stuff 
that you didn't necessarily have a need for or even go out with a, an intentionality to get. Uh, but that's how easy it is to spend. Now, if the era of shopping malls were easy to spend money on, you and I know that in this era of online shopping, it's easier than ever and more convenient than ever and everything's one click away from shopping. In fact, we can actually replicate the Christmas experience all year round now. Think about this. You, you order, you, you order your, your thing and uh, off you go, you know, off you go to work and off you just carry on with life. And a few days later or a week later, you come home and there's a box. There's a box on your door that's been delivered by, well, not Santa Claus, but a courier that's kind of subbing in for Santa Claus. And you think to yourself, I have absolutely no idea what this package is because you've ordered so many things that you've lost track of what's coming and when it's coming. And so you grab that box, you grab that package, you go inside and in that moment, it's Christmas day for you because you are gonna be opening that package and awaiting the surprise that lies inside. And this can go on and on and on and on. It's just so easy these days. Look, I know of some people who are on the a first name basis with their delivery driver. And I know of some people whose delivery drivers are on a first name basis with other delivery drivers because they keep bumping into each other, coming and going from the same residences. Well, perhaps this, as you uh, anticipated as you embarked on this kind of journey of, of pay increases, which I know is not everyone's story, but it's certainly a reasonably common uh, story. You may have thought that the more money you earn, the less pressure and the less stress that you would feel. And yet now, as you look back, having bought the new car and the second car and the new home, or done the renovations, or put in the pool, or gone on those reasonably expensive vacations when we were allowed to go on vacations. And though you're earning more, you're feeling just as much stress, or potentially even more stress, because the stakes are higher now, than when you were earning less. And uh, whilst uh, Notorious B.I.G. said, mo money, mo problems, the truth is actually mo money, mo spending. Mo problems. And then there's a third scenario. You know, scenario number one, creating margin. Scenario number two, no margin. Scenario number three is where those, those uh, trend lines on the graph actually are flipped from the first graph. That, that, that some people, many people, in fact, an increasing amount of people are consistently spending more than they earn. And so there's margin, but it's not called margin, it's called debt. And debt is a problem because when you're in debt, you don't get to decide what you do with the money you have access to. Your bank tells you what you have to do. Visa tells you what you have to do. Afterpay tells you what you have to do. And I say have to do, I use that, it's like, what? Nobody tells me what to do with my money. No, um, okay, really? Are you sure about that? Okay, so if you're in debt and you don't think anyone could or should tell you what to do with your money, because after all, it's your money, here's what I want you to do tomorrow. Or maybe just as soon as I finish this message, shut it off, pick up your phone and call your bank or call your credit card provider and, and, and tell them, hey, uh, I decided that I no longer want to make the repayments to you. Uh, in fact, this is a bit boring now. In fact, I actually want to uh, buy a new car. And so instead of paying you, I'm going to stop paying you and I'm going to put that money towards a new car. Okay? Well, in that moment, your bank or your credit card provider will remind you that no, that is not okay. 
And they'll remind you in no uncertain terms that as long as you owe them, they own you. You're the slave and they are the master. And you might not like it. I mean, you can get angry at them. You, you can resent them. But here's the thing. They didn't do this to you. If, you. if you have consistently spent more than you earn, then you did this to you. Decision after decision, expenditure after expenditure, overextension after overextension, got you in this place where you are now the slave and the person, the institution you owe the money to, they're now the master. So here's what I want to do. I want to, I want to drop us into a story, one of uh, the 16 of the, of the stories that Jesus taught about money and stuff. So if you've got your Bible app, grab that and uh, open it up to Ma uh, Matthew uh, chapter 25. And I'm going to drop us into the message version. I said last week, and let me just catch you up on this, Jesus taught between 35 to 38 uh, stories, teaching stories, of which 16 were about money and stuff. So that's around 40%, nearly half of what Jesus taught was about money and stuff. And we drilled into one of those teaching stories last week, and I'm going to drill into another one today. So let's go. This is what Matthew recorded that Jesus taught, one of the 16 stories Jesus taught about money and stuff. He said to the, the crowd that was gathered, It's also like a man going off on an extended trip. The man called his servants together and delegated responsibilities. To one servant, he gave $5,000. To another servant, he gave $2,000. And to a third one, he gave $1,000, depending on their abilities. Now, before we go any further in this story, let me uh, repeat something that I said last week. Bible College 101 that in each of Jesus' stories, there's always a character that represents God. And there's always another character that represents us. So look, just so you don't miss it, <laughs> the man that was going on the extended trip, that's God in this story. And the servants, they're us, you and me. Okay. And so the reason that's critical to understand for this story, and in fact, any of Jesus' teachings on money and stuff, is it, it's a reminder that God is the owner and that we're the managers. And, and by the way, even while the owner was away, he was still the owner. Even while uh, the servants had the money in their hands, they weren't the owners. In, in, in Matthew, in this translation, the message translation, does say that the, the master uh, gave them 5,000, 2,000, 1,000, but actually he didn't give it to them. It wasn't a gift. It wasn't a loan. It, 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 in fact, another translation says it, I think, better or more accurately that uh, the master entrusted those uh, sums of money to the servants. Then right off, Matthew continues uh, recording what Jesus said. Then he left. Right off, the first servant went to work and doubled his master's investment. The second one did the same, but the man, man with the single thousand dug a hole and carefully buried his master's money. Well, after a long absence, the master of those three servants came back and settled up with them. The one given $5,000 showed him how he doubled his investment. The servant with 2,000 showed how he'd also doubled his master's investment. And then the servant given the 1,000, said, Master, I found a good hiding place and secured your money, and here it is, safe and sound, down to the last cent. Now, there's a few takeaways from this story that Jesus taught. One of them is just uh, decrying that it's not fair. I mean, it's not fair that they got different amounts. And, and, and you can't blame the guy that only got the 1,000 for maybe feeling a little bit resentful that the master only entrusted him and felt he could only trust him with, with $1,000. And so no wonder he just kind of got lazy and, and didn't do much with it. And maybe some of you are wrestling with that today. You know somebody, a friend, a colleague, a family member, and, and you, you work just as hard as they do. Maybe you even work harder than they do. And yet they're earning more than you're earning. They're seeming to be getting ahead faster than you're getting ahead in life. 
and you can be thinking it's not fair and I don't have time to unpack that today. But that's one takeaway. The one I want to focus on is this idea that Jesus was emphasizing that it's not a question of how much we're entrusted with. The big question is, what are we doing with whatever it is that we're entrusted with? Chances are you have a bank account. Uh, some of you maybe also have some savings or some investments. Uh, most of us, if we're employed, uh, have uh, superannuation or 401k or that, that kind of thing. Imagine this. Imagine if uh, tomorrow you wanted to check on the status of, of the, the bank account, the superannuation account, the investment account. And so you called that institution and uh, you, you identified yourself, you gave them your customer number, and you said, you're just inquiring as to what my, my balance is. Imagine if the person on the other end of the line was to say to you, uh, we're not sure. Uh, I mean, to be honest, we're not actually very organized. Um, I mean, we're not strong on details. I mean, uh, I mean, keeping track, really? Keeping track? It's such a pain. So look, uh, sir, ma'am, I'm sorry to say, we, we really have no idea of the status of your account. And we don't know where the money went. We don't know how much is left. We, we search us. Well, time to get another bank. Time to get another bank because you know and I know that they are tasked with a responsibility and, and the responsibility is clear. It's your money, at least in this scenario, and you entrust it to them and they are appointed with the responsibility of managing it on your behalf, of taking that seriously. And there should be no guest work. There should be no head scratching. There should be no, well, I don't know. It should be very clear from them and they should have a very easy ability to be able to confirm to you what they've done exactly, exactly what they've done with your money. Well, God does that with us. He's the owner and he's entrusted us and entrusts us with a portion of his money. And it's our responsibility to manage it in a way that brings him honor, in a, in a way that pleases him, in a way that, that demonstrates that we take this responsibility seriously. And so I asked the question last week, if, if you were God, based on your current track record of, of handling money, would you, if you were God, would you hire you? Or the question on the other side of that coin, if you were God, would you fire you based on how you're currently handling his money? So let me stick the landing on this today. Now, we, uh, this is a three-week series. We're actually finishing this series in two weeks' time because next week here in Australia, it's Father's Day. And so uh, we've got one of our great friends, Rob Mason. He's going to be preaching and uh, we're going to do something a little bit more geared towards Father's Day uh, next week. And so we'll be actually wrapping up this series, If Money Talked, week three. Um, so between now and then, it's two weeks, between now and then, here's what I want us to do. Here's what I want to encourage us to do over the next two weeks. Keep an eye, when it comes to your finances, keep an eye on where you send it and where you spend it. Now, steady on. I'm not talking about a budget or a plan. Not just yet. I, I'm, just, I'm just talking about and inviting you over the next two weeks, just pay closer attention 
when it comes to the money that God's entrusted to you, pay closer attention than perhaps you have ever been or in recent times have been to where you send it and where you spend it. Great to have you with us. Thanks for being a part of the journey. We'll see you next time. Here at Elevate Church, we love to give. And the reason why we give is to reach people and to build people. I welcome you to take part in this great mission by using any of the options displayed on your screen right now. I really enjoyed today's online experience and I hope you did too. Please stay connected with us using the Facebook page. You can use the um, Elevate Church app and you can comment in the section below this video. Until next time, stay safe and God bless you.